Welcome to Kids Church Online. Here are today's announcements. We will be starting a new program for leaders if you are interested in being involved in our LIT, Leadership in Training. Feel free to join us at 12.30 in the multi-purpose room. You can contact Pastor Crystal and Caitlin for more information at family at rpcchurch.ca. Moms and Baby Group will be meeting on Tuesday from 11 to 1. More information, please feel free to contact the office. Every Friday night, we will have preteens from 6.30 to 8.30. Today's big point is, God wants our lives to be a living sacrifice. Right here, we have Woofy. He's planning on going out to play hockey with his friends later today. Woofy is a big hockey fan, but he hasn't played in a while. So he dusted up all his gear from the garage and here. He's kind of unsure what to put on. Let's see how we can turn this into an object lesson about the body of God. Now, first Woofy, he's gonna put on his chest protector. Perfect fit. Now he thinks he's ready to go on. But Woofy, wait. If you only have a chest protector, how are you going to protect your head from flying pucks? How are you going to hold the puck with your stick? You can't. You don't have your helmet on or your gloves or your stick. You can't go on the ice like that. Now try putting on your gloves. That's it, Woofy. Do you think you're ready to go on now? Woofy, no! Wait! You haven't even put on your helmet, or and you haven't even grabbed your stick yet. Okay, do you want to try one more time? Okay, now put on your helmet and grab your stick. Now do you think you're ready to go out? That's great, Woofy, because you are ready to go out. Now, this all relates to the body of God. This hockey gear can represent it. Earlier, Woofy wasn't able to go out onto the ice because he didn't have all the parts of his gear. Woofy may have only had his chest protector on, but that wouldn't work because he couldn't protect himself from flying pucks, or he couldn't handle the puck. This is just like the body of God. You see, just like how Woofy couldn't go on earlier without his stick or without his helmet, we as children of God cannot go around without different parts of the body of God. We each make up an individual part of God's body as a little part and together we make the entire thing, but only when we are together. If we are not together, the body can't function properly. That is why we need to stay as a collective. We need to build each other up. We need to be a community. That is why together as a body of God, we can help serve and do God's will on earth. And here's today's memory verse. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Romans 12 verse 1 Today's main points are Point 1. Being a living sacrifice means that we are giving our whole lives to God. Point 2. Being a living sacrifice means that we will love and serve others. Point 3. Being a living sacrifice means that our lives will imitate Jesus. I'm reading from Romans chapter 12 verses 1 to 8. So brothers, since God has shown us great mercy, I beg you to offer your lives as a living sacrifice to him. Your offering must be only for God and pleasing to him. This is a spiritual way for you to worship. Do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. And you will be able to know what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. God has given me a special gift.
That is why I have something to say to everyone among you. Do not think that you are better than you are. You must see yourself as you really are. Decide what you are by the amount of faith God has given you. Each one of us has a body, and that body has many parts. These parts all have different uses. In the same way, we are many, but in Christ we are all one body. Each one is a part of that body, and each part belongs to all the other parts. We all have different gifts. Each gift came because of the grace that God gave us. If one has the gift of prophecy, he should use that gift with the faith he has. If one has the gift of serving, he should serve. If one has the gift of teaching, he should teach. If one has the gift of encouraging others, he should encourage. If one has the gift of giving to others, he should give freely. If one has the gift of being a leader, he should try hard when he leads. If one has the gift of showing kindness to others, that person should do so with joy. Paul opens this part of his letter to the church in Rome by talking to them as being a living sacrifice. Think about everything that Paul has been talking about in Romans. He shares with them their sinful condition apart from God and their need for a savior. He then shares with them the great things that God did for us through his son Jesus. He also shares about how we have a relationship with God through faith or belief in him. Then we learn that God has given us everything we need to live our lives for him. Now we come to the place where Paul is saying, since God has done all these things for you, here is what you need to do. He shares us with some real practical things that our lives should look like. He begins by saying that he needs to present our bodies to God as a living sacrifice. What this means is that we need to respond to what God has done for us by giving our lives to him. Just like the people in the Old Testament would bring the best they had to God, we need to bring our very best to him. We need to give him our bodies and hearts in service to him. Paul says this is our reasonable service. God is not asking too much of his children by asking this for our lives. He has given us his son Jesus so we can have eternal life. How much more we need to give our lives to him? Paul then encourages us not to be like the world, but to be transformed or changed. We need to be completely different people especially in the way we think. People who don't know Jesus think the way that the world does. And the way the world thinks is opposite of how God looks at things. We need to know God's word and allow it to change our lives completely. We need to think and act like Jesus would. Then, when we give our lives to God and be transformed by him, we will understand what his will is for our lives. He will show us exactly what he wants us to do and how he wants us to live. Go grab your parents and answer these questions with us. What is the meaning of sacrifice? How, two, how can I be a living sacrifice? Three, where can I learn to live for Jesus? After reading Romans 12, 1 to 8, what's one thing you learned? Hi everyone, and welcome to Kids Zone. Today we're talking about what it means to be a living sacrifice for God. And we've been talking about how being a living sacrifice means we're giving all of our lives to God, and how it means loving and serving others and imitating, imitating Jesus in all that we do. 
Well, in thinking about this, I was thinking about the story of Corporal Desmond Doss. He was a World War II hero, and he was what they called a conscious, conscientious objector, which means he refused to carry a weapon of any kind. So what he was, is he was a combat medic, which meant he went in with the, with the infantry company and he would help the wounded. He would um, give them first aid and help them, you know, get to the, get to where they could get to the hospital, that type of thing. That's, that was how he chose to serve. He was made fun of because he didn't, he refused to carry a weapon. Um, people thought it was weird. It was strange. And he was very faithful in how he followed God, even so that he didn't want to work on what on the Sabbath day. And so people thought that was weird. But through his patience, through his love and serving his fellow fellow um, members of his company, he, he earned their trust and it ended up that you know they didn't want to go into battle without him. The biggest part was during the Battle of Okinawa. During the Battle of Okinawa, of course, there was lots of wounded and they were on this big, steep, steep, what's called an escarpment, which is basically like a big cliff. And after the battle, Desmond Doss is like, you know, I can't leave the wounded there. They just can't leave them there. You know, I gotta help them. So he climbed up that escarpment, that big cliff, that tall cliff, which in itself was quite the feat. But then he ended up going on to the, where they had had the battle and he ended up rescuing 75 people just by himself. Each person he got, he would help. He tied a rope down, he would lower it down to the bottom and those um, platoon members at the bottom, they would take those people to where they could get to the hospital. Desmond Doss would go back for another one and another and another each time praying god you know just one more just one more god desmond doss was somebody who when i think about being a living sacrifice he was a living sacrifice he imitated jesus he read his bible he prayed his men knew that in fact they wouldn't go into battle they wouldn't go into battle one time because he wasn't finished praying yet and they wanted to wait for him he also loved and served his fellow men. Even though they gave him such a rough time at the beginning and things weren't smooth, he still loved them. He showed them God's love by, you know, by just being a friend to them even when they weren't to him, by helping them even when they were kind of mean to him. And he was one that also gave his whole life to God. He wanted to serve God and he wanted to do it with his whole heart. And God helped him do that amazing thing of helping those 75 men after that battle of Okinawa. And because of that, those men got the chance to get better and live their lives. The good thing is, is that you don't have to be a World War II hero to be a living sacrifice. You can be a living sacrifice right now. All you need to do is just ask God for the grace and the power to live for Him every day, to make that choice to serve Him and serve others every day. And to ask God to help you to be more like Him every day. Let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for being who you are. I thank you, God, that you love us so much that you are wanting to do everything you can to help us to become more and more like you. I pray, God, for each and every child here, that, God, you would help them, Lord, to, to imitate you, to be more like you each day. I pray, God, that you'd help them to live with you for you with their whole hearts, with their whole minds, with their whole souls, God. And I pray, God, that you'd help each child to love and serve others, even when it might not be the easiest thing to do. God, help us all to choose to, choose to serve you daily.
God, thank you so much for being who you are. I pray for your continued hand of protection upon each child, each person who's watching. And I pray that you give them an awesome week. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks for joining us. See you guys next week.